no one cooks the way we cook and no one has the bounty of raw ingredients that we have. So to live and cook here is not only an exceptional experience, but people worldwide know about it. As I look back on my youth, I realized the gift God gave the Falls family. I grew up learning how to fish, gather seafood, and cook every day of my life. Join me, Chef John Falls, as I cook up dishes honoring the age-old traditions of seafood and Louisiana's world-famous cuisine on hooks, flies, and alibis. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924 and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. While other places mark the passing of the year with winter, spring, summer, and fall, here in Louisiana, our seasons are determined by the abundant shellfish available to us. Thus, one of my favorite seasons of the year is oyster season. And Louisiana Native Americans, as well as early French settlers, harvested and ate oysters. By the mid-1840s, Slovenian immigrants arrived in Louisiana and began fishing for oysters in the rich waters adjacent to the Mississippi River below New Orleans. The Slovenians virtually developed the oyster industry in estuaries near the Mississippi River. This area is still inhabited by descendants of these oyster pioneers, such as Matt Levitich, who continues to harvest these delectable pearls from the Louisiana waters. Now, what makes these waters here ideal for oysters? Uh, and, and it's, the, it's the right mixture of, uh, uh, of fresh and salt. So if it's too much salt, it's not good, and if it's too much, too much fresh, it's not good. But with the river, you know, Venice is the mouth of the river is down here about 15, 20 miles. So it's the right combination of salt and fresh water. And these, these are natural reefs right here. And uh, we're actually seeding these orchards today and moving them to a different area. This is a productive area. It's, it's producing naturally. So I'll take these from here and, and go three miles down the road over there towards Empire. And I'll put them on an area that, that, that that's, that's just a hard bottom, that it's not producing. Just, you know, because a lot of these leases, we, we, we started leasing them from the state. They, they were just, we took this mud, this was all mud. and. and we created a uh, productive oyster reef out of this by, by planting culture and, and cultivating this. You know, we, we created something out of nothing. You said something a while ago that was interesting. You said if there's a flower garden over here and you need some roses, you pick up a couple and move here. This is your idea of roses here. Same thing. <laughs> well, I can't wait to taste them. I know they're going to be good. In years past, fishermen harvested oysters by hand-picking them from reefs. In time, they developed oyster tongs and dredges to collect oysters. Louisiana remains one of the few places where oysters are plentiful, allowing purchase of this luxury item at affordable prices. I challenge anybody to find a more delectable, plump, salty tasting oyster anywhere in the world.
Native Americans have a tremendously rich heritage and culture. They value their ancestry and to some degree still enjoy gathering their food from the land and the sea. I just left the Port Sulphur area around Empire, Louisiana, getting off of one of those large oyster luggers, learning all about the life cycle of an oyster. But now, I'm in a place totally different in the world. I'm here on a, just a wonderful little island. If you would describe, Curtis, where are we when you look at the boot of Louisiana? Where would you say we are now? We right on the little toe of the, <laughs> we right on the little toe of Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, we all on, all the way to the end. Y'all, this is uh, this is Curtis Hendon. Now, he's half Native American, Homer, Homer Indian, and half German, like myself, right. the Hindenburg. That's, that's what right. his family is from, the Hindenburg side. That's right. Now, was your mom... Uh, that uh, was my daddy's uh, family. Yeah, so your mom was uh, Homer. Homer Indian. Now, tell us about the island. This is a very strange name, but a name that we know so well, the name of the island. The uh, Jean Charles uh, had always tell, uh, had always, uh, people told me, that Ella Jean Charles, the first family that was, that moved over here on the island, his name was Jean Charles. Jean, uh, Jean Charles, Jean, Jean so Charles, like, uh, yeah. in French, Jean Charles. Jean Charles, correct. Right. So he named the island Ella Jean Charles. Ella Jean Charles. That's huh? what I was always told. Now, now, the families that live here, how many Native Americans actually live on this island now, families? Uh, right now, they have probably about eight about families. About eight families. And Everyone just about living here at some point or other were oyster fishermen, oyster right? Oyster fishermen, shrimpers. Right. Yeah. Now, you come from a family of oyster fishermen. What makes oysters so interesting in this area? Like I said, I just got back off of Empire. Yes. But uh, but what makes the oysters uh, so great? These are some of the saltiest, most delicious oysters yes, I've ever eaten. Yes. Uh, more than likely, more than likely, like some of the places in Empire or, or uh, Point La Hash, uh, it's some old beds. Uh -huh. The old beds been there for generation after generation, and uh, 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 it's a good solid bed, and uh, it's not like a soft bed. Well, you can see just how clear and yes. beautiful the water yes. is around here as and well. And it's always flowing. That's which right. Means there's a lot and of when you're dredging, here. when you're dredging a, a old bed, a old hard bed, when you're dredging them. Every time you pull your dredge up, the oysters are really nice and clean. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. Well, yeah. these oysters, I mean, y'all, I want you to see this. Can you imagine that this is an oyster right here? Just tremendous. Now, what we've done, we've soaked them in salt water overnight. Now, as an oysterman, you told me that this was the first time That's you the had first ever, time seen. I ever seen them. We put the oysters, it's already salty, in salt water. And let's put a couple of them on the pit. We've already, you can lift that up and just throw a couple of them on there. And y'all, what we're doing is taking the, uh, the oysters that soaked in salt water and we're putting them onto the pitch. You can put them on that top shelf. We already have a couple of them on here. Now the salt is super saturated inside of the oyster and those on the bottom should be just about ready. You think they're ready to pop open? Well, well you got you got a good be. you got a good be. hand. Let's grab one of them. Let's grab one of them and pop it. And uh, let's see if, uh, if you can. They're hot now. I uh, know they're hot. Uh, <laughs> hot and we'll, salty. Uh, we'll uh, get them with the stove. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Pop, now just I, 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 can, uh, I can tell you they, uh, they, they just they're start, they yeah. start, They're just starting to yes. pop. Y'all, I tell you, this is incredible the way this man opens these. Oh, yeah, look how easy it came open. Yeah, huh? It came open easy. Yeah. Now, now pop the, only thing is, the only thing is the shell yeah. is very hot. The shell is very hot. The shell, the shell has become a little cooking vessel here. A cooking vessel. Oh, Lord, look at that. All we need to do is get one of them in there open. And y'all, I've got some brown butter going here because we need to make a sauce as well. Now you see how the yeah, oyster, the bottom. Yeah, and you see how the oyster is really sizzling inside the shell right there. It's just really beautiful. Now you can cut the bottom. I'm going to make the butter. I have some, a block or so of butter, whole butter. I'm going to put in red onions, garlic. Smell that garlic going in there? Yes. Huh? Herbs, yeah. a little basil, a little thyme, a little parsley going in there. Not that I need more salt. A little bit pepper, a little bit granulated garlic, Worcestershire sauce. What cannot be good with all that flavor, huh? I know. And uh, what I'm going to do is just shake that around a little bit, and I'm going to put some of the garlic seasoning on the oyster, and that goes back wow. on the grill. Is that too hot? Just yeah, put it no, right back there. Y'all, we're in one of the greatest 
places on earth by oysters on this eel Jean Charles, this little island that was named by a gentleman so many years ago, now inhabited by many of the Homer Indians. And I tell you what, one of the oyster paradises of the world, and I'm cooking with Curtis right here, Hinden of the Hindenburg family. That's right. <laughs> anyway, you have to come make a trip to the toe of Louisiana on the booth. Thank you so much, Curtis, Thank for you. being Thank here you. with us. Let's yeah. go ahead and get some more oysters yeah. up. great news about Louisiana cooks is their ingenuity, and with such a versatile cuisine, it's easy to transform one dish to another. Take, for example, Oysters Rockefeller. I'm not saying that you can improve it, but my Oysters Rockefeller soup? Hmm. You have to judge it for yourself. Y'all, I tell you, I'm so excited to be on the dock here at White Oak today in our little outdoor kitchen because I have not only one of my good friends here, but the family who, in my opinion, has some, if not the best oysters in Louisiana. And I have, of course, Matt Lepetich here. Matt, how you doing? Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. doing all right? Man, look, did we have a time out on the water or what, huh? We sure did. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, a perfect day, nice and calm, and uh, I think we got to see every aspect of the industry right there. You know, you know one, one thing that I, I want to say, I, 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 I'm not sure, how do you get your dad to to drive the boat and do all that work. My dad never never did all that work for me. He said, get out and do your own work. How did you, how did you make that happen? You, you have to have the, the other you, way around. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> my mother helps me out with that a little bit, you know. <laughs> I, I gotta make sure I, I let him kill a big buck on my place, you oh, know. Right. Or I take him hunting a few times. So y'all dealing. So y'all dealing. We right? wheeling and dealing. <laughs> now, now, that's a great, a great, great historical uh, 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 culture in the oyster industry. And your family came here many, many years ago. Tell us quickly about that. Uh, I think my dad came here in 1972. Uh, and where did uh, he come in from? He come from Croatia, and uh, his brother was here before him, so they kind of sent for him to right. help, help in the business and. Uh, he came, uh, I think he came, like he said, he came with an empty suitcase, so um, right. he, uh, they started work together, and they were in business together, and they, uh, they were in business for 40-something years. Well, and, well, uh, well, 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 I want to talk about that a little bit, because y'all, y'all, your business is not only fascinating, but just so unbelievable uh, in its quality. Y'all, I want to tell you a little bit more about that, but we're doing an oyster Rockefeller soup today in honor of uh, of uh, Mato's oysters, I said. Now, now your company, where does the name come from? Mato is uh, <laughs> well, I was my dad's name, Mato, <laughs> and uh, my name is Matthew or Matt, and uh, which is you know, Mato means Matthew, and you know, in oh, Croatian. Okay, okay, I got you. And, so that's uh, the name of the company. I, hopefully, if I have a, a son one day, I'm going to name him Mato. So the company was really would be named after my son. That well, he ain't actually here yet, but we're hoping for <laughs> it. So. Well, that's fantastic. Well, let's go. Let's grab the. I have my butter here. Uh, the oysters Rockefeller soup, just pick up, you can pick up that whole big platter and throw it right down here. I'm going to put the onions, the celery, the bell pepper. Y'all, we're doing an oyster soup, garlic. Look how much garlic is going in there. Croatians use a lot of garlic or what, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, all of that right down in here. And y'all, and you can just put that on the back table for me. Now, y'all, the soup that I'm making today uh, is actually, I think, came about uh, in my own restaurant after eating the very famous soup uh, uh, from Warren LaRuth. You know, Warren LaRuth had a great restaurant in... Uh, in Over there in Gretna, yeah. In, in Gretna. And Warren created his oyster and artichoke soup that people came from around the country to sample. And so many chefs then started to look at combining oysters with other vegetables. So you smell that? I have a little smoked sausage in there. I have a little bit of all of that. Now, once all of this is coming together, it doesn't take long. I'm sauteing uh, all of these vegetables in a little butter. Let's go ahead and put about... So you can put about half, I pureed some spinach leaves in there. And, uh, half of this? Yeah, no, you can put about half of that. Now tell me about this with the, the months uh, with an R. Y'all must get asked about that all the time. Where did all that come from that you, that you can only eat I oysters think, uh, and months with R? Well, these days uh, the R stands for refrigeration, obviously. <laughs> we have refrigeration on the boat and, and in the in the trucks. And years ago, in the olden times, I, I believe oysters were shipped on, on uh, they didn't have any refrigeration. so. They were just referring to the R being the times when they're, you know, that they, they actually taste better. 
you yeah, know, right. it's in the winter time or, or the early spring in the summer, oysters get kind of milky and they and they, and they, right. and so, they so. reproduce. So it gets kind of skinny. So the so. the munch and R are the are the times when they, they just taste better, to be honest. Right, right, oysters sure. are safe all the time, but it just, I think it's referring to yeah. when they... And, Bob, we have some great oysters. Now, you took me to a little place called Bayou, Bayou Ferran. Ferran, yeah. Ferran, you said, this is the best oysters anywhere near the Gulf. And let me tell you what, I don't, I don't know. I know those were the best I ever ate, so I guess they had to be, be the best on, on the Gulf. <laughs> look, look how the spinach is coming together. Now, put all of these oysters in here. I'm going to dump all the oysters down into the spinach mixture. And then I'll need to add about half of that flour. Now all we want is really good spinach, really nice uh, flour, about half of that in there. And then we're gonna move that around. That's plenty enough right there. That's my thickening agent. And then you see that pitcher? That pitcher has some hot stock right there. Why don't you pour about half of it down in here? And y'all, I tell you, as I think about oysters, I just wanna make the soup, so that, that's good right there. And you see that heavy whipping cream? You can add about half of that in here. Y'all, these dishes have been around since the Middle Ages. You know, when we think of oyster fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, really unbelievable. But we have records where in the Middle Ages, the poor were the first to commercialize oysters by going pick them, coming into town and selling them to the people passing by. So when we talk about oysters, we're really going many, 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 almost thousands of years back in, in actuality. So y'all, you can see how beautiful this is. The oysters are gonna let all of that water out into the soup and I have some that's already done. Let's uh, let's take a walk right here and I'm gonna get this. I have a bowl, now I put a little pasta on the bottom, I'm gonna take my ladle and you can just take it and dish right on top of the spaghetti. And you can use linguine, you can use, yeah, put a couple, make sure you get a couple of those good oysters out of there. I got them out of Bayou Ferran, you know. <laughs> Give me one more big ladle. One more won't hurt us. <laughs> one more won't hurt, put it in there. I tell you what, let me tell you, I know you get married, but you better learn how to serve and not put, uh, get it all over the bowl, you're gonna get in trouble in the kitchen, you know what I mean? Maybe so. <laughs> anyway, y'all, so that's what it looks like right here. Look, look, look at that, can you imagine? Y'all, we're gonna be back. In just a second, I'm bringing his mom up and we're gonna cook a great oyster dish. You're not gonna believe it. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> East Coast, West Coast, P. Hi, Malpec, yes, these are all great oysters, but if you're a real oyster aficionado, Louisiana Gulf oysters are the best, the tastiest option every time. And I tell you, those are really, really beautiful oysters, huh? They are really nice eyes. <laughs> Y'all, uh, finally I got Matt out of the kitchen and his mother Joyce is in the kitchen. I feel much better. <laughs> now, do you know we were talking about in 1917, there were like 83 oyster bars, oyster salons in the city of New Orleans. And I didn't know that oysters were the first profitable export out of this country to the New World, out of Louisiana to the New World. I, I had no clue. 83 oysters out there. I don't think we have that many now. No. I mean, they, they keep adding. Everybody's got an oyster, grilled oysters. Right, you right. You know, so. Now, now, now you're, you're an oyster lover. I do love oysters any kind of way. Oyster <laughs> Rockefeller, you just made soup. And, I mean, grilled, fried. I love the idea of this dish because it's so simple. So, do you start off, that, now, now y'all, you're not going to, this is an oyster spaghetti. But if you can imagine, this is all flour, a little bit of onions and celery, and just oysters with all the salt and the flavor. So you ready to, uh, to ready, go? You're ready, ready to go. To so, roll. so what do you want to go with in first? Okay, a little, oil, little, little olive, olive oil. oil is okay. great. A little bit of olive oil into my yeah. hot cast. About that much? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that much right there. Now, what, what do you We're want to go? We're going to do in? the onions and the oh, okay. celery. Y'all, I tell you, I love cooking like this. This is good cooking right here. So onions and celery Celery's, right down yeah. into it, just like that, right? All of that, the, right? All of that. All of that. Little fine. green onions and parsley. Yeah. I'm gonna throw some of that in there as well. That's, now you can stir that. That's, that's perfect. Right there, that. Now, now, so you're just gonna mix all of that in. I put a little. I can put a little more touch yeah. of an olive oil. Just is that about how much seasoning you put in it? Yes, that's all the seasoning I use. Now you say you never put like bell pepper or no, none of that. Nothing now. It takes away from the oysters. Right. So it's just celery and. Y'all, this got to be the easiest oyster dish I've ever seen, but I tell you what, you have to know what you're doing just to get the flavor right. Now, you have 
an interesting, this is a Croatian seasoning, but it's made with uh, potatoes and vegetables, all, all kind of vegetables, especially mm -hmm. root vegetables, yes. which is really fun. And this goes in after the oysters, right? Yeah, now. Right, after the oysters, okay. I saute the okay. oysters, throw okay. those in. I'm gonna go ahead, not, now you okay. said not too much liquid, no, right? No, not too much liquid. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this in like that. How much are you, as many as I want? As many as you wish. No, I'm gonna put a lot of them in yes. because, y'all, now, now I tell you what, it must, must be a pretty good feeling. I mean, y'all are the oyster kings. I mean, no doubt about it. Your, your oyster company is just phenomenal. I, I, I just absolutely love it. And I spent, as you well know, a lot of time on y'all boat. So that was that was a fantastic experience. I heard y'all had a great day. We had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> now, does flour go in or the okay, seasoning? Okay, um, the seasoning. Okay, now do I just sprinkle it in like this? Yes, or about that that's much? all you need. Just, this just one little, yeah. Just one, sprinkle one, it all one, around. One little one like this, y'all. One, one little Not one. Not a tablespoon, just a little, <laughs> little teaspoon. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Oh my! I wish y'all could smell this right here. And then uh, now, now the flour. No, I got to put some Creole seasoning. Yes, right? yes, and a little I keep Creole. I keep in front of you here, but that's quite uh, all right. A little bit. Yeah, look, a little bit. Y'all, look at the sauce that's being created right in the pan just from the oyster juice. Now that's yes. really the idea, right? Exactly, and, and we put a little flour to soak up that juice because you want it a little thick, it's gonna go over pasta. Now, now once you now once the water really starts in, it's a little difficult to add more flour yes. because it'll start to kind of kind of stick yeah. a little bit, but that, that that thickens pretty good. Yeah, it thickens well. Now do we need a little salt and pepper in there? No, or? no, the seasoning's fine, that's all you need. Nothing everything's else. in everything's in it already right. all i'm gonna tell you and then, uh, you know we we're talking about new orleans just now but you know in europe as well uh, and, and i know uh, your husband uh, uh, cro from, from croatia yeah. but i mean the oysters from uh, even back in the renaissance the street street vendors selling oysters all throughout europe were incredible i i guess, I guess that oysters have just been a phenomenal industry and loved by people all over the world for thousands of years wow. they're probably easy to get look how beautiful that is huh? Oh, yeah is that is, about it right this there? is about it and some um cream heavy whipping cream. oh heavy whipping cream yeah oh, here it is heavy whipping cream now how much should i put in that um half of it at least half of it now, now here's the secret ingredient right here right so i'm gonna let you just assemble that around a little okay, bit great. and now now you put it on top of pasta yes. why don't you get our pasta bowl over there okay. now would this just reduce down a little bit more <laughs> correct and just let it kind of reduce until it gets nice uh no no additional seasoning like no, no pepper or nothing, nothing in it nothing now y'all do you uh, and you, when you put it over the pasta just a few green shallots well, That's you know it. what? Now, y'all, we would cook this a little bit more, right? Right. But for uh, demonstration purposes, we can go with it, huh? Yes, it, it'll uh, be fine. It'll be good. Y'all have to try it and taste it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> what you mean, y'all have to try it? Y'all have to try this, it. This is my portion right here. <laughs> Look how thick it's getting in. All of this is pure oyster liquid right here. Now, you said we could add just a little green onions on yeah, it, huh? Yeah, just a little green. A little green onions, yeah, a little bit fine. partial like that. Right. Y'all, just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful dish. And I tell you what, you know, Mom, you do a pretty doggone good job in the kitchen, huh? Done in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna be back in just a minute. minute. One more great <laughs> dish from the Lepetich family up here in just a minute. You don't want to miss the next one, I promise you. That was great. Look, I mean, okay. I, I have to taste that. Okay. I prefer my oysters on natural, so to speak. No lemon, no cocktail sauce, none of those masking flavors. I just suck them right out of the shell. But I realize that some of you out there might need a little something, a little mix, so to speak. That's why God made oyster shooters. All right, y'all, everybody has their little oyster shooters here in this little beautiful antique oyster shooter glass. Normally, you just take it in one swig. See the oyster on the bottom, huh? Everybody ready for that? Anyway, y'all, the, uh, the last dish I want to show you, look at the beautiful oysters Rockefeller right there on that platter with the green spinach. In 1899, Jules Alcator, the owner of Antoine's Restaurant in New Orleans, couldn't get snails from France, so he decided, I have to do something so he took oysters, put them in a shell, covered them with his secret ingredient, 
and, and told everybody on his deathbed, do not give the recipe away. Oysters Rockefeller, of course, are one of the most famous dishes in the world today, founded right there in New Orleans. How's everything, everybody? Uh, great. Y'all, I have a great, great oyster family here. In fact, I've just brought in uh, Janie Luster and uh, RJ right here and, and Kathleen, all members of the uh, uh, Homa Indian Nation. Uh, they've been with us before and I just absolutely love them. And of course, Papa Lepetich right here. Papa, he's the one who really does all the work, believe me, I've seen it other than this sweet lady right here. Anyway, y'all, thanks for stopping by the camp today. And when it comes to good, fresh Louisiana seafood, remember, there's no such place in the world better than Sportsman's Paradise. So we'll see you next time for another tasty edition of Hooks, Lies, and Alibis. Um, you ate two of my oysters? No, you, ate two, you didn't eat two of my oysters? I got two of them missing. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924 and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. For a copy of John Folsom's cookbooks and more, call the number on your screen or visit www.lpb.org slash Fulse.